This is the Andres Segovia Show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Andres Segovia Show. I'm your host, Andres Segovia. On today's episode, finally, I get to react to this mailer that I received from the California's Association of Realtors with respects to a fair housing toolkit for realtors. Uh, along with that, I got the California Real Estate, which is a realtor magazine that uh, I guess they still consider me a member of the association, or maybe they just didn't get the memo when I stopped paying my dues. <laughs> uh, this one, though, I'm glad I received because um, I did make mention of this on social media. For those of you that don't follow me on social media, I'm across multiple social media, which is ever changing, which I kind of stopped telling you like like uh, on, through iconography, follow me on these and that, because it's an ever growing list and it ebbs and flows. Um, sometimes some places I just drop out, uh, which is probably been like once or twice. But in the case of uh, uh, Facebook, I'm not there. I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook for about a year and a half. Uh, Instagram, yeah, I had a business Instagram account for the longest time. So I remained there and I turned it into the Andres Segovia. So that's my number one um, uh, account, which I recommend that if you want to see behind the scenes things, that's the place to go check it out. That's where I posted about this when I received it. And as promised, I said I was going to live react to that. Let me move this because I did a different presentation before this. Started filming. I kind of forgot about that. This is the Andres Segovia show talk show roast available from Ranger Candy Coffee Company. So go to RangerCandyCoffeeCompany.com. Use promo code Andres Segovia. If you haven't done so already, get free shipping. So let's get going on the reaction to uh, this. I it's Look, I have a hard time telling you how I want to begin this. Um, I've already had my predisposition on the idea of what all this is. I've already talked and expressed a lot with respect to the direction in which the California Association of Realtors has gone. Um, I used to say that uh, the intentions are good. The, their heart's in the right place. Not anymore. Not with the direction in which certain corporations, uh, certain politicians uh, that, uh, that have pushed forth policies and regulations that uh, discriminate against those they highly disagree with, uh, politically speaking, um, or people of Christian persuasion Christian, um, that they really, really um, despise. So when I used to say their heart was in the right place, that was before um, these either political parties or ideologies were hijacked by extremists on either side. It happens. And, and now some of them are making policy. That goes... The same for the Association of Realtors uh, at every level, from the national to the state to the local chapters. Certain places have gone with the term is woke. Uh, and, of course, the, the conservatives say, go woke, go broke. Uh, in the case of the, the leftist liberals that actually adopted woke, that's actually appropriating a, a term that didn't mean what they thought it meant. But they they would champion wokeness and, and all these this and that. So the conservatives took that and ran with it. It's like, oh, just throwing it back in your face. So then now, depending on where you find yourself, some of the, you, you're misusing the term woke to try to get back conservatives. Actually, you used it first. So context matters. And that's what, what I'm trying to highlight with respect to uh, these items here. Um, so these are four items. The main three I want to address, uh, one of them is an abstract. This is the letter that introduces the supposed study that was done with respect to um, home ownership in California and the demographics that own it and what's transpired since the, the lockdowns and things and how the demographics that changed in home ownership, how some were uh, adversely impacted by it and others benefited from it and this and that. And then uh, topping it all off is the Fair Housing Toolkit of Realtors, which I'll save for later because I'm going to – there's something in the news that I got to address along with that. But I'm not going to go over the study because this isn't technically the study. This is some of the findings. And I actually share what the findings would be as soon as I open this thing. I'm like, I'm not even going to look at it, but I know what the findings are. And it's going to have to do with – racism and it's going to be that the the blacks and hispanics are the predominantly the ones that have been adversely affected by whatever uh systemic racism that's prevented them from uh, being able to own homes so that was my uh that was my hypothesis before i looked into this that was paid for by the associate realtors and when i saw who was the one in charge of this uh, of this study let me see it was commissioned by the center for color uh 
for California real estate. Um, the research was done by Dahl Myers, a PhD, USC Price School of Public Policy, um, Hyung Lee from Virginia Tech, Simon Cho from USC Price School of Public Policy, David Rosas um, Mekzuma, also from USC. I, I probably butchered the name too. Um, USC Price School of Public Policy. But uh, as I understand, it was headed by Dole Myers. Now, I'm not going to put the overlays up anymore. Um, I had some overlays that I wanted to show, but I'm not going to show you. But I will say, to, to kind of uh, bring this whole, their heart was in the right place to close. Now it's not. Now it's about how to virtue signal uh, and how to ram through the policies that you want to push through because you want to see it done. Look, if your heart's in the right place to help those that are disenfranchised or left behind or you know, less fortunate than you are or lack the privilege that you were born with and things like that, um, then you would be open to ideas. You wouldn't be closed off in your own world and want it done your own way and at the same time vilifying the other side for not wanting to do it the way you do, despite the fact that the way that you're going about it has been proven to fail over and over and over and over again. So that's what I mean, that it used to be um, that their heart was in the right place. At least that's how I perceived it. At least maybe even 20 years ago, uh, I would still hold to that. Now it's just everything's activism. and. It's a shame because uh, if we're Americans united and coming together for a common cause, then we can certainly put politics aside to be able to get to the bottom of why is it that uh, certain demographics are more adversely affected by economic changes, um, demographic changes, um, and other geological uh, societal things that change that affect their ability to, to even be a homeowner. It's the American dream to own a home. And the thing is, that's the word, home, not house. Now I have to be careful with how I use the terminology because to buy a house is frowned upon. It, you would pull up. I did an episode called, is buying a, a home or buying a house a good investment? I did this uh, several years ago, and it holds even more today uh, because it's a strong movement, uh, even from – economic magazines discouraging people from buying a house meanwhile blackrock is buying up all this property and turning a bunch of uh, americans that were in the market too and they were outbid by blackrock and in turn they ended up renting the very home they wanted to buy turning more of our members of society into permanent renters instead of being able to live out that dream so BlackRock apparently, along with um, it's, is very keen on implementing the World Economic Forum's um, policies on on sustainability, a more sustainable future. What is it? A sustain? Yeah, a sustainable future. See, it's look all these gotcha words. If you're in politics, you know what these things are before you even read them. It's kind of like you know what Amazon was going to do with the Rings of Power before the Rings of Power ring came out, uh, and lo and behold, everyone's right. So now. Uh, right on cue, Amazon with their um, PR campaign to attack all their fans that are paying for this thing, saying that you're wrong, not us. Like, oh, my goodness. It's uh, it's crazy. Look, I, I might seem like I'm going a little bit everywhere. No, it's all tied in because this is uh, it's symmetrical to what's happening in our country today, that we cannot have a discussion about this because of how hyper-politicized everything has become. And it's a crime shame, really. This is the, the letter from Otto Katrina, 2022, president of CAR. It gives me great pleasure to announce the release of a new research report commissioned by CAR's Central for California Real Estate and produced by USC's Sol Price School of Public Policy and Virginia Tech. The report examines how trends in housing continue to impact various population segments. It analyzes California's housing crisis, Paying particular attention to how a larger than expected millennial generation is driving housing demand, how historical trends have resulted in inequities for communities of color, and how market imbalances are shutting middle and lower income residents out of homeownership. So that's part of the letter. I'm not going to read the whole thing. CAR, you're part of the problem. Um, spoiler alert. So here are some of the findings of the demographic trends to watch. But let me start off with one of the quotes they have here. 
حضر العود تمام the housing opportunity deficit falls on most vulnerable including disproportionately black and latino residents supporting data from study let's see uh why this trend matters what, what is this market imbalances so these are the the things to watch market imbalances leave low income renters behind reverse and filtering of housing supply uh so they go into explaining um some of these things uh if lower income renters in california no, no longer have access to older units particularly renters they face potentially being edged out by housing entirely shortages of middle income or market rate rental housing are causing high and middle income renters to scavenge for opportunities downscale which places greater pressure on renters who are competing for a limited supply of low-cost rentals in addition Frustrated would-be buyers are forced to remain renting, augmenting the demand for rental renter, rentals and creating an imbalanced housing market. Imbalanced housing market when these higher income renters are in competition with low income renters. Let me respond to the first thing. I have not read this, okay? But as a real estate broker and as someone who's been involved in the industry through construction, real estate and property management for uh, 20 years, I can at least tell you this. There's a failed experiment that's that's been used in Los Angeles and been implemented in other places. And because of the passing of AB uh, 14, 1498, 1482, oh, my goodness, I forget these numbers from assembly bills. We have a statewide rent cap in California. Okay. And before that, we've had rent control, the strictest of its kind, at least in the West Coast, in Los Angeles. The... The worst example you could think of is there. Then you have San Francisco. When you think of San Francisco and Los Angeles, you think of the most expensive housing in the country. And if these things have been implemented, rent control, that is, not a statewide rent cap, not, not a rent cap. Rent cap is different from rent control, okay? Uh, and I'm not, I'll, I'll talk about the nuances here uh, as, as we go along. Rent control uh, in Los Angeles has been around 40 plus years. It was supposed to uh, keep rents from being too expensive and reducing homelessness. Today, we have the highest population of homelessness in the country, in Los Angeles, along with the highest rental rates. And instead of addressing the issue at hand, which rent control doesn't work, it became the model for the state and to double down on it or triple down in some cases. Because when the state introduced a statewide rent cap because rent's too damn high, what then happened? I said, now watch every individual city that doesn't have a rent stabilization ordinance kick in and do their own thing. How many more cities this year in California have implemented such actions? The biggest such city being Santa Ana. It's it's crazy. It's like, wait, I thought we had a statewide rent cap that addressed the issue. No, it doesn't go far enough. What do you mean it doesn't go far enough? Because the problem is a rent cap is just that. It'll cap a rent at a rate or whatever. But who's the one monitoring, governing these property owners? Like, well, we need we need some kind of govern governing bureaucracy to do it, and that is a rent stabilization ordinance that needs to be some kind of guidelines for that city. So a RSO, as the acronym is, they step in and then start uh requiring property owners to register their property that they're using for income property. They start uh, requiring property owners to be paying for the inspections that the city is going to be doing once or twice a year, like kind of like health inspections for restaurants. Same thing for for housing. They're going to go check it. Oh, it's, you know, it's not painted right enough or or look at oh, all this clutter that the tenants left their property owners. Your fault. But if the tenants left the clutter, no, it's your fault. So here's a fine. Get it done. If you don't, then you're going to get another fine. The point is that an RSO's end game is to commit eminent domain over the property owner so they can take over the property because then they'll say, you know what, property owner, you don't know how to take care of your own property, so we're going to take care of it for you. We're going to be receiving the rental income from here on out. But in case there's a dispute between the tenants and the property owner, so the RSO also installs um, a, some places like Los Angeles call it a rent rental escrow account program, REAP. What that is is a board of attorneys available to the tenants so the tenants can go on rent strike. Rent strike? They're not unionized. According to these guys, they are now because now they're they're lawyered up. And guess who pays for those attorneys for the tenants? As a property owner, you do. That's all bundled up in an RSO. You're paying it's, it's to basically have your own rights taken away from you. 
city councils do this and a lot of the property owners that show up and and plead to not do this because it'll just harm the economy and and just uh continue to cause rental rates to increase they don't care they don't care they don't listen to property owners and i tuned into the live conferences at city hall uh it's you know, the santa Ana. it's a crime shame Communities of colors are experiment are experiencing changes in neighborhood demographics due to housing scarcity and greater barriers to homeownership. All right, that was a little loaded. This these two kind of go in tandem. Okay, so here's the thing: if rent caps are capped so low, how does a property owner recoup um, the lost in rental income if they're only able to raise the rent, say five dollars, twenty dollars at most uh, a year, and the rental rates is like disproportionately high if that rent cap was capped in the case of Los Angeles like 40 years ago. So how do they recover that? Well, when a tenant moves out then the property owner goes in there, renovates the property. So now they can market it at market rate. So now it's high and it's in the benefit of the property owner, if they can, to turn it into a freaking luxury apartment so they can get their money back. So their return on investment that they lost over time. And now that they put in having to pay for the renovations that cost thousands and thousands of dollars because of building codes and all these different things. Now you got to collect the rent. So when does that happen? When the tenant finally leaves with the depressed rental rate, then you can put all this other stuff into action if you got the funds to do it, which more often than not, they don't. But if you're a savvy tenant and you have an apartment, three bedrooms, you live by yourself, but you have a three bedroom apartment in Santa Monica and you're a high earned renter and you had this place for 25, 30 years. Why would you move out? You would keep renewing. No, I'm not going anywhere. They're trying to evict me. Oh, you don't have just cause to do that. No, I got housing on my side as a tenant. So you would stay there. Meanwhile, you either buy your own house or you rent somewhere else too. But you have a vacation home because in Santa Monica, this is not a made-up story. This happens. Meanwhile, a family that could benefit from this can only afford one room. And they're paying through the nose for it. So when it's like, oh, it's adversely affecting the Hispanics and Blacks. The ones that are actually having children in a lot of cases, despite the fact that Planned Parenthood installs these abortion centers to control my people. Look it up. Margaret Sanger. Eugenics. I'm not making that up. A lot more things go into this. So what are the barriers to homeownership? The barriers to homeownership were supposedly removed when we had the equal opportunity housing. And California having the strictest rules when it comes to lending and representing when the buy and the sell of things. We have the strictest one in the state. But we're meant to believe that it's harder to buy now than it used to be before these laws were enacted. Really? So one of the barriers to homeownership, you mean, is qualifying for the loan? Huh. You mean you need to have money? So then you would hear these things on uh, be talked about online and then you hear the politicians talk about it it's like a person flipping burgers cannot afford a home to feed his family of five so five for 15 that became the five for 20 five for 22 whatever it is you mean a job to flip burgers will now pay more than an emt on an hourly rate i'm throwing hypotheticals out there folks so what then happens to all the commodities such as produce, meats, dairy, they go up. Everything gets more expensive. So you thought you're making more money because your take-home pay is more. But now everything that you're shopping for is disproportionately higher. So how did you benefit from that? The rising of the minimum wage has never resulted in more savings in your pocket. Especially if you haven't learned what it means to save a dime. Even a penny. Penny saved is a penny earned. And here's the thing that these things don't take into account. The welfare state. Why is it disproportionately targeted to my people and the black community? 
And why does the welfare state prefer broken homes? It's like, is the father living with you? No? Married? No? All right, keep it that way or else you're going to lose your benefits. Oh, then. Better not then. It's like, stay away. Or in the case of my people, some of them are working here to send money back to their country. Billions of untaxed dollars are sent out of the country. It's not just my people. But they were sending it back because they're trying to help their families in their countries where they couldn't make a buck. So if they're able to save, it wouldn't be much. And meanwhile, the commodities are more expensive. So how can they save it? Then you factor in inflation. The price at the pump. Or Gavin Newsom hating jardineros. It's like, hey, now I won't be able to do the gardening with tools with, uh, with, with my equipment because they're saying that this is illegal now. But yes, it's racism. How foolish of me. The millennial wave is crashing into the housing market. Arrival of the largest generation pushing soaring housing demand. That's the third point they make here. That has a lot more to do with the millennial generation and those after them being trained to think that owning a house is bad for the environment. How dare you be greedy? You must be content with sharing an apartment complex with a bunch of strangers you don't know. And well, when you got locked down for months on end and you couldn't go anywhere and you felt the walls were closing in and you were getting unhealthy, you couldn't be let out of the out of your house because it was a health emergency. Meanwhile, you would check social media, people actually enjoying their own house that has a yard. They were able to go outside on their own property. You don't think that convinced them when you have a ton of high earner renters that never believed in owning a house? Well, they're the ones that jacked up the prices thereafter because they were out there. I was among them competing with 40 others per property. Holy smokes, 40 offers. You know how insane that is? As, as a, a real estate broker, I had to come up with a different way to filter out all this because you can't conceivably go through every single offer. It's like, okay, only take this as the minimum basis for the funds because that's insane. And then from there, weed those out. Or just email blast everybody and say, send in your best and final offer. Let's see who's serious. It is nuts that that happens. But could it be, folks, that like my people that wanted to continue working during the lockdowns but weren't? Or because racism is such a health emergency that it was allowed for the pillaging, the burning, and the destruction of small businesses that had nothing to do, nothing to do with the so-called systemic racism, that they, the machine that they were supposed to be fighting. Why was BLM torching their own neighborhoods, harming their own people, destroying the life savings of people, their own communities? You mean to tell me that had no impact on their ability to buy a home after the pandemic when they say, you know what? I don't want to live in the inner cities anymore. I need to go buy a house. It's like, but all my money went up in flames. I didn't have insurance to pay for that. Oops. I couldn't afford it then. Now I can't afford it. Or how about this? For the property owner that was relying on the rent. You, no, no, no. It was a rent free. You can't collect the rent. But I got the utilities to pay because the tenant's not paying them. I have the mortgage to pay. I got the insurance on the property to pay. Like, oh, you know what? Check with uh, your mortgage lender for them to do um, a forbearance. You mean they'll do a, a, a mortgage freeze for maybe three months at the top six months and on the seventh month, all seven months are due? Why doesn't that apply for the tenants? In the case of Los Angeles, one year they don't pay rent. And then an extension, an extension on top of the extensions because we can't, we can't have them all evicted onto the streets because we told them not to pay their rent. And in the case of King Garcetti, to say, by the way, the this this order stands so long as we're in an emergency, uh, uh, and the emergency order will be lifted one year after the pandemic is declared over. And Los Angeles is still staying there in a health emergency, plus one year, and we're two years later. You mean that had nothing to do with the loss in income that disproportionately affected my people? But no, let, let, it's, uh, it has to be. 
It has to be racism. That's why Bank of America comes out with a new program a couple of weeks ago that the only qualifying parties are blacks and Hispanics. How is that not a violation of equal opportunity lending? Prejudice disguised as helping those that need to get home ownership. What sank the housing market 14 years ago? It was a monster in the making. 1993, Community Reinvestment Act. Bill Clinton signed it before the Republicans and the New Kingers took over the, um, the Congress in 1994. What happened? The relaxed lending rules by the government told the banks you cannot be requiring or verifying income because it's discriminating against the low-income blacks, Hispanics, and others from being able to get a loan to buy a property. And the banks are like, but they got to pay the money back. It's not technically our money. It's the people's money. They're depositing it here. And the government said, don't worry. We will bill you out. Talk it over with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Okay. You're giving me commission and permission to say I'm not responsible for lending to a dog. Literally, they, there was loans given out to dogs. And then the collapse happened. And then the Occupy Wall Street's like, look at these greedy banks did. Who let them off the leash? The government did. And here we go again. The Community Reinvestment Act, 1993. Look into it. There's a book called Reckless uh, Endangerment, I think. I'll have to double check that. I'll probably overlay it when I find it. And the other one, this one, Bank of America, if I'm not mistaken, is called... Uh, the community affordability um, uh, loan, something like that. I just kicked my camera. <laughs> um, this thing works me up, folks. The California Association of Realtors is responsible for the rent cap issues, AB 1482. I remember now. that. That basically opened the door for statewide rent stabilization ordinance. That is the association's fault. And I was present for the meeting where they said they were not going to do anything to fight it anymore. So it's their fault. And then they go on and say, oh, oh we're sorry. We were part of the systemic racism. We were part of the problem. So uh, here, let's make policies to make sure that we uh, tr crack down on implicit biases. And when we do so, we're going to basically uh, harass and target our very own realtors who do not parrot what we say. So when I say that before I used to be their hearts in the right place, not anymore, not anymore. Because if you don't vote in a, if you're not of a political persuasion or a religious ideology that they like, they will vilify you. Whether you are behaving at the professional level, which you're on, that is something that they're entitled to do is that you're a, a, a realtor with the brand, you're an ambassador for the brand, they got sway over that. No, not the same personal. And you still get guilt by association and you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, according to them. Huh? Fair housing toolkit. And the association of realtors is responsible for the elimination of the generational wealth that they claim the inequities of the past hurt black and Hispanic um, wealth generate, uh, generating and building because they couldn't have those privileges that were afforded then before you know, the, the fair, fair housing and lending rules came into play or the equal opportunity credit opportunities and stuff like that. Say, no, it's even worse now because they didn't have it then. But you're the one that wanted legislation, Proposition 19, that eliminated the ability to pass property untaxed to next of kin or even grandchildren. That's gone. So you eliminated generational wealth like that. California social realtors, look in the mirror. A lot of the policies of the past several years 
that you don't realize are the very harm that you claim to be fighting against, you're responsible for it. And then you go and hawk this crap, a sustainable future, a sustainable future, building resilient communities. You put a house here, but you're part of the problem when Klaus Schwab says you will own nothing and you will be happy. World Economic Forum, look it up, 2016, 2018, something old. Brittleman, whoever they interviewed, suggests that agents and buyers look for Energy Star certified homes with water sense labeled products, drought tolerant landscaping, highly efficient sprinkler heads, and weather based irrigation systems. Well, all that sounds fantastic. It is to say, don't own real grass, share a community where you don't have that much of a yard and you all share one pool because it's community based. Um, you have only one garage that maybe can fit a car in some of your storage needs. Uh, but there won't be space for anything else. There's no parking down on the street for you. Um, and if you have guests over, uh, there really isn't anywhere for them to come visit. So go meet at the go meet at the park, the community park. You will own nothing and you will be happy. And a lot of these places are HOA. You know how easy it's gonna be for the HOA to adopt and say, you know what? We're gonna yield our uh policies over to the state. And now these become rental properties. Don't be surprised that happens. I wouldn't be. So this is my live reaction to all this. This is an honest reaction. I didn't plan any of my remarks. This is all just comes from the inside because this is what I deal with daily. Okay, It's what I do for a living. My bread and butter. It's been doing this for 20 years. I just didn't want to deal with the politics of things, but not everything is political. It's so annoying. And it's just sad that it's it's come to this. You know, it's just you know how hard it was for me to see all my first time buyers drop out of the market in the past eighteen months. They couldn't afford it. They couldn't compete. No one was being kept down by racism. Some of them were like, I just didn't like reporting all my income. It's like, well, that kind of hurt you in your qualifications. Uh, it's like, so they learn, it's like, oh, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a better job and reporting my taxes. But not all this stigma. It's all, it has everything to do with, with the systemic racism and all this. Um, so that's why we got to pass policies that put in racist policies in the name of equity. Yes, racist policies, spearheaded. By large corporations in the state, Silicon Valley mostly, and also the ones that claim to be for the American dream. Excuse me, because my voice is going dry. <clears throat> Including those that say they're supposedly for the American dream and ask the Association of Realtors, California in this case, national too. They're, they're the ones that did the hate speech rule. That's just, it's sad. And this, is, well, this will be all for the worst. So pay another several thousand dollars to another study a few years on the line to find out what went wrong and just bookmark this episode. Come back to this. You were the reason why and your failed policies. You didn't have to hire Dahl Myers, PhD. If I'm not mistaken, based on his own tweets, that is Highly anti the right, like any Republican, it seems, or maybe it's just Trump derangement syndrome. I don't know what caused them to latch at anybody that has a different political view from them. But this is the economic guy that spearheaded this. I immediately knew what the answers are going to be in these things. And why is it that you're hiring a white person to spearhead this thing? What, what is it with this white savior complex? I'm throwing it back at you. This is what you guys do. White savior complex is what you guys call it. Why did we need to pay from our association dues for a, a study like this to tell you political talking points? Literally. Say, oh, but now it's backed up by, by data. Data that you didn't even bother looking at the real thing on the ground. You just wanted things that can fit your narrative. You didn't bother looking into why, how the welfare system affects um, communities like mine. 
You didn't bother checking into how the minimum wage has affected the income of a lot of these people. You didn't bother into actually asking my people, how do you spend your money? Or is it, or you want everything cash when you work because you have a distrust of the government? You didn't ask them that. You didn't ask them that at all. Did you ask him, are you funneling your money back to your family in different countries so they can buy a home over there? Wait, you bought a home out of the country? Yes. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Because they plan to return to their homes. That's why we have billions of untaxed dollars that are sent overseas, or in this case, over land, Latin America. You can follow me across the socials, many different places. I'm available across many video platforms. This is my intent to make myself as uncancelable as possible. Check out, you can support me at theandresagovia.com forward slash shop. Referral links are available down below for different products and services that I personally use. That's it for this one. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.